Elon Musk just predicted AI will become smarter than humans in the next two years. OpenAI just announced ChatGPT 4.0 and are already starting to work on their new flagship AI model. 16 influential tech companies just agreed to implement a kill switch for AI to prevent Terminator style risks. But how did this all happen? Well, we'd have to go back thousands of years. You see, the concept of AI is as old as civilization itself. Although back then they only saw it as science fiction, something out of the realm of possibility. Mythology, perhaps. Specifically, Greek mythology. It was the Greeks who imagined the first ever AI robot more than 2,500 years ago. In Greek mythology, Talos was a giant, artificially intelligent bronze statue dedicated to protecting the island of Crete. Now we can go back a little closer to modern day, just around 400 BC, to this guy right here. His name is Plato. Pretty cool guy, kind of invented philosophy. Well, Plato saw intelligence as something innate, discovered through reason and contemplation, implying that a machine could potentially have access to all knowledge, but it may not necessarily understand it in the same way that a human would. However, Aristotle, also a pretty cool guy and a student of Plato, believed there were different levels of intelligence spanning from machines to human beings. Well, this thinking led to the creation of something called automatons, which is Greek for acting of one's own will. These were mechanical devices made in imitation of human beings. Essentially, they were the first ever robots. And one of the earliest records of these was a mechanical pigeon created by another Greek philosopher, also a colleague of Plato, Archiatus. One of the most famous automatons was created by Leonardo da Vinci in the year 1495. So as you can see, robots have been a part of human civilization for a very long time, and the intelligence of them has been something that philosophers have questioned as well. Now I'm not going to bore you guys with all the boring philosophy stuff, so let's just skip ahead a few years to the 20th century, where the groundwork for AI was laid. It started off as science fiction portrayed in the media, so much so that scientists actually started to question if it was possible to create artificial beings. The first ever instance of this case was in 1921, where a Sezek playwright named Carol Kopeck wrote a play describing the creation of enslaved synthetic humans, which he called robots, a term derived from robota, the Sezek word for forced labor. In the play, the robots who were originally created to serve humans eventually became conscious and started to rebel, killing all humans in the process. In the play's final scene, it's revealed that the robots possessed the same emotions as us. This single play led on to create thousands of stories following the same premise from The Terminator to Avengers Age of Ultron. It's a story as old as time itself, human creations eventually becoming its extinction. Well, this play disturbed thousands of people, and one of them was a Japanese professor named Makoto Nishimura, who thought the play convincingly portrayed reality. From early European and Japanese automata to the creation of steam men, walking human humanoids powered by internal steam engines, Nishimura truly believed that what he saw in the play was a fate that humanity would soon succumb to. As a scientist, he had witnessed attempts to create artificial cells in the laboratory, which only reinforced his belief that artificial human beings would one day populate the earth. Fearing a scenario similar to the one depicted in Carol's play, Nishimura decided to create an artificial human not as a slave, but as a companion to humans. In 1926, he resigned his professorship, moved to Osaka, and started building his ideal artificial human. Nishimura refused to call his creation a robot, but opted for Gatu Tensoku, which means learning from the rules of nature. Just a few years after its completion, the machine was lost under somewhat mysterious circumstances. Looking back on this creation, this wasn't exactly artificial intelligence as we know it, but a complex mechanism powered by electricity and airflow. Regardless, Nishimura's creation had a massive influence on Japanese robotics, and his philosophy of enslaved robots rebelling against humanity still holds up today. The portrayals of robots in the media became so constant that scientists had started to question whether robots could become sentient. They had even started to publish articles about them. One of the first came from the computer scientist Edmund Callis Berkeley, who published the book Giant Brains or Machines That Think, which compared the newer models of computers to human brains. Perhaps the most famous article on artificial intelligence was published in 1950 by Alan Turing. Alan was an English mathematician who was often referred to as the father of modern computer science. He had bounced around several professions in his career, from publishing his first article just after graduating college, to building a machine capable of breaking ciphers to be used in World War II against the Germans. After the war, Alan became fixated on the philosophical question of what it meant to be sentient, which led him to publish the paper Computer Machinery and Intelligence, which was the inception of the Turing Test, or originally called the Imitation Game. The goal of the test was to see whether a machine had the ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to that of a human. If a computer could imitate the sentient behavior of a human, would that not imply that the computer itself was sentient? The idea of the test was fairly simple. 
Can an artificial intelligence engage in conversation with a human without being detected as an AI? If not, the AI has passed. Turing's main concern was that machines would be limited by memory and would never have enough to pass this test. He predicted that a computer would be able to pass the test if it could store 100 megabytes of memory, something he thought in the 1950s would be possible by the year 2000. However, the memory in machines far exceeded 100 megabytes many years ago, and human-like performances in the Turing test are extremely rare. In the years following Turing's test, the fields of machine intelligence and thinking machines started to take form, specifically in the game of checkers. In 1952, a computer scientist named Arthur Samuel developed a program to play checkers, which is the first ever to learn the game independently. Because his checkers work was one of the earliest examples of non-numerical computation, Samuel greatly influenced the instruction set of early IBM computers. The logical instructions of these computers were put in at his instigation and were quickly adopted by all computer designers because they are useful for most non-numerical computation. Three years later, artificial intelligence had gotten so popular that scientists had gathered one summer for an AI conference at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. At the conference, a programmer named John McCarthy decided to call it artificial intelligence, and that was actually the first record of this term being used. During that same conference, the world's first AI program, Logic Theorist, was written by Alan Newell, Herbert Simon, and Cliff Shaw. Its purpose was to prove several dozen mathematical theorems and data. The 1950s was a massive decade for AI, and it's commonly associated with the birth of AI. I mean, you had dudes creating the first ever AI programs and creating words like machine learning, which was actually coined by Arthur Samuel. Yeah, remember him, the dude that created checkers playing AI? Well, in 1959, he tried to create a computer that could play chess better than a human, and that's how he came up with the term machine learning. And just one year before this, John McCarthy created LISP. It's an acronym for LISP processing. And the first programming language for AI research, which is actually still very popular to this day. So yeah, you can kind of see that the 1950s was just all about innovation. Entering the next decade though was when things really started to take off. The creation of new programming languages, robots and automatons, research studies and films that depicted artificially intelligent beings increased in popularity. This heavily highlighted the importance of AI in the second half of the 20th century. I mean, you arguably have the most popular movie about AI being released in this decade, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, where the AI HAL attempts to murder everyone on board the ship. In 1961, an industrial robot created by George Deval called Unimate became the first to work on a General Motors assembly line in New Jersey. Its responsibilities included transporting die castings from the assembly line and welding the parts onto cars, a task seemed too dangerous for humans. Honestly, the 1960s had an insane amount of innovation, so instead of going in depth on each one and making this video over 30 minutes long, I'm just going to quickly rapid fire as many as I can. In 1961, James Slagle, computer scientist and professor, developed SAINT, Symbolic Automatic Integrator a heuristic problem-solving program whose focus was symbolic integration in freshman calculus. In 1964, Daniel Bobro, computer scientist, created Student, an early AI program written in Lisp that solved algebra word problems. Just one year later, Edward Feigenbaum and Joshua Lederberg created the first Expert System, which was a form of AI program to replicate the thinking and decision-making abilities of human experts. The first ever chatbot was created in 1966 by Joseph Weizenbaum, originally called Chatterbot, a Eliza, a mock psychotherapist that used natural language processing to converse with humans. The same year, Shaky the Robot was developed by Charles Rosen with the help of 11 others and was the first general purpose mobile robot also known as the first electronic person. And finally, in 1968, Terry Winograd, a professor of computer science, created SHR DLU, an early natural language computer program. So that about sums up the 1960s, constant new creations and innovations in the field, which actually was not enough for one scientist in particular, James Lighthill. The man actually wrote a full-out report for the British Science Council, which gave a very pessimistic prognosis for many core aspects of research in the field, stating that in no part of the field have discoveries made so far produced the major impact that was then promised. This actually led to a much reduced support and funding for AI research from the British government. Regardless though, the 1970s still birthed some amazing AI programs and inventions that we still use today. For example, Mycin an artificial intelligence developed by Ted Shortliffe at Stanford University and is used for the treatment of illnesses. And in 1979, AI had gotten so big that they created an association specifically for AI advancement called the American Association of Artificial Intelligence, and they held their first conference in 1980 at Stanford University. We now enter the 1980s, the decade commonly known as the AI boom, despite having what was known as an AI winter, a period of reduced funding and interest in artificial intelligence. The decade started off pretty well, 
I mean, you had the Japanese government allocating $850 million, over $2 billion in today's money, to the fifth generation computer project. Their aim was to create computers that could translate, converse in human language, and express reasoning on a human level. The first expert system had come into the commercial market, known as XCON. It was designed to assist in the ordering of computer systems by automatically picking components based on the customer's needs. Wabot 2 was built at Waseda University. This inception of Wabot allowed the humanoid to communicate with people as well as read musical scores and play music on an electronic organ. In 1984, Roger Sank, an AI theorist, and Marvin Minsky, a cognitive scientist, warned of the AI winter, the first instance where interest and funding for artificial intelligence research would decrease. And their warning came true within three years' time. From 1987 to 1993, AI popularity and development significantly decreased. Both private investors and the government lost interest in AI and halted their funding due to high cost versus seemingly low return. This AI winter came about because some of the setbacks in the machine market and expert systems, including the end of the fifth generation project, cutbacks in strategic computing initiatives, and a slowdown in the deployment of expert systems. Fast forward a few years and artificial intelligence slowly started to regain its popularity thanks to a chess match. Gary Kasparov vs. Deep Blue, a computer developed by IBM whose purpose was to play chess and be really good at it. So good that it beat the world champion 4-2 in a match viewed by millions around the world. We now enter the 2000s. The new millennium was underway and AI continued trending upward. Some of the most popular movies about AI was made during this time. More artificially intelligent beings are created and companies had started adopting AI for their operations. This was also the time when computers and the World Wide Web had become accessible in many homes. These developments gave neural networks and deep learning algorithms the fuel they needed to start making significant advances. 2010 was also the year artificially intelligent vacuum cleaners would begin making their way into people's homes it's called the Roomba, and was invented by Joe Jones while working at the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. This started the path of human and AI integration, which would only continue to grow in the following years. Companies such as Twitter, Facebook, and Netflix began utilizing AI as a part of their advertising and user experience algorithms, and as computers advanced, so did AI. In 2011, an NLP computer programmed to answer questions named Watson, also created by IBM, won Jeopardy against two former champions in a televised game. And that same year, Apple released Siri, the world's first AI assistant. And that brings us to the 2010s, which is the present, which currently seems like we've entered a new AI boom with its rise in popularity. The advancements of deep learning and big data led to the creations of deepfakes, virtual assistants, search engines, and chatbots. OpenAI was founded in 2015 and released ChatGPT on November 22nd, 2022. And well, the rest you're probably familiar with. It seems like we're living in history right now with the amount of advancements in the field being made in what seems like every week. Google Gemini, Claude Opus, GPT-40, Sora AI, just to name a few. It truly feels like we're in a new era for AI and what seemed like a steady incline on advancements for the past 50 years has seemingly skyrocketed to new heights in a matter of a year. From Plato and Aristotle contemplating human and machine intelligence to artificial intelligence being able to understand and portray human emotions, we've truly come a long way and it seems like we're only going to go further.